Hey there, campers. My name's Kimmy. And my name's Ryan. We've noticed you stumbled upon our mystical campfire, so that means there's a solid chance you have some questions. Like... Why am I here? What's going on? And why are there cryptid and folklore creatures everywhere? And should I be worried about the Mothman dressed as a camp counselor swooping down to steal my s'mores? Well, you've stumbled upon the Alorian Campgrounds. Alorian is a folklore podcast where every episode we dive into the history and lore of different creatures and cryptids you see wandering around these campgrounds. And during each episode, we discuss the sightings, encounters, poems, history, fun, facts, and pop culture focused on our campfire topic that week. We hope through shared experience we can learn and make light about all the unknown corners of the universe. So come take a seat around the campfire, make yourself at home, and listen to Alluring Today anywhere podcasts are heard. Or watch videos on YouTube, or even go to our website, Alluring.com. That's A-L-O-R-E-I-N-G dot com. I'm Felicia. And I'm Ian. And we are the Paranormal Lovers. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another week of the Paranormal Lovers. This is episode 11. 1-1. 1-1. I should look up what that angel number is. I bet it's special. I bet it is. Um, so today, let's see, what did you love about this week, Bill? Uh, this week, kites. Kites. I liked flying kites with you guys. That that was was fun. fun. I was 1000% waiting on our kid's kite to like hit my friend that was there with her family. I was going to say the (laughs) same thing about it. We were, we were flying kites at this park and one of my wife's friends was there with her two little kids and... My kid was flying a kite. It was way, <laughs> way up in the air because it, it was a windy day Tuesday. And um, all of a sudden, I see it come like storming toward her friend and her two little kids. And I'm like, watch out. <laughs> we were both yelling like, look out. There's a mermaid coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Um, you got some cool kites. Good job on the kites, cool baby. Kites. Well, I, you, of course... Of course, she took the one that I wanted. <laughs> yep, the dark mermaid. Yeah, the dark mermaid that's pink and green and mm-hmm. left me with like the pink or purple and green. Left me with the pink and green and red blonde headed fairy. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well, what are you going to do? You don't like the woodland fairy? I like Faye well enough, <laughs> but you know me. I. My home is in the ocean. Right. So, not in the air or the trees as much as I like them. Um, Yeah, I mean, we we spent, we had some good days going outside and doing stuff this week. Uh, Yeah. It was some good weather. I tried to keep her out. Yeah, we tried to keep her, we tried it. She got to start soccer shots this week, which is really cool. It's like a... It's not a soccer team, but it's more like a soccer class. So she gets to do that every week, and she's so damn excited. All right. This week, we're going to take you guys to Asheville, North Carolina. Awesome. We're going to visit the site I of love that place. Highland Hospital. Highland Hospital? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we're actually going there. Not Highland Hospital, but we're going to Asheville this afternoon to do a photo shoot Woo. with my best friend. So, yay. Um... Yeah, Highland Hospital was a mental health facility. Um, It was founded in 1906 by Dr. Robert S. Carroll. It was originally located in downtown Asheville, known as Dr. Carroll Sanatorium. Spooky. um, Quick shout out to Mountain Murders, a Appalachian True Crime podcast who... Also records out of our county, which is pretty cool. Um, I got I listened to their episode on this, and I got a little bit of extra information from them. Nice. Honestly, they were like one of the only podcasts out there that had done an episode, because it is kind of hard to find information on this. Right. So this one might be a little bit of a shorter episode, but interesting okay. and sad, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, moved from downtown to the Montfort area. And in 1912, the name was changed to Highland Hospital. Unlike most hospitals of the time, and I think Heather on Mountain Murder called it the sanitarium era Mm -hmm. or something, or the asylum era. It was like from the 1800s to early 
1900s, they were just everywhere. Right. Like they were trying is, to like diagnose mental health and stuff. Yeah, they were trying to like do that, but like it was terrible. Right. Um the terrible. dark ages of mental health. Oh god. <laughs> well, honestly, like thankfully we don't have shock treatment and stuff anymore. Right. I, well, I mean, you can get it. But it's like a a wi- willing full yeah, thing. I mean, you have to be <laughs> other like, than forced. You'd have to be in like Broughton or something. Right. Like you can't just go up here to the hospital and they do it. But yeah, um, unlike most of the hospitals at the time that only focused on using some of like we were just talking the most barbaric medical treatments. Highland also incorporated physical wellness and nutrition into the treatment plans. Hmm. And, you know, Asheville, beautiful up there by Grove Park in stunning, yeah. stunning out there. Patients would take hikes. There was a farm on campus of the hospital. They would work on it. Um, Of course, they got healthy, nutritious meals. They would be able to go for a swim. And then, you know, when they weren't outside, they were getting shock therapy, um, horse serum injected into their spinal column. Lobotomies. (laughs) No, they actually... Well, I think Heather said they may have done like one or two there, but I don't mm-hmm. think any lobotomies were ever actually performed at that hospital. Well, that's Just good. Just like a couple of the patients had gotten them, but yeah, um, they also did water therapy, which is, I love water, but not that. <laughs> uh, Dr. Carroll lived on campus in a house with his wife, who was world-renowned pianist, or is it pianist? Is it is it pianist or pianist? It's pianist. Pianist. Grace Carroll. She ran a music school and gave concerts from their home. One of her more well-known students was jazz musician Nina Simone. Hmm. Hi, girl. Sweet. One of the most well-known patients at Highland Hospital was Zelda Fitzgerald, wife of author F. Scott Fitzgerald. And he wrote The Great Gatsby. Right. um, Which I've never read. Ever seen the movie? Meh. Don't give a shit. I'll watch it eventually. I think I remember something about it being like something to do with the Biltmore House. Like it was wrote about it or or something like that. Um, I don't think so. No? No. Um. Maybe it was shot there. Like I said, I don't know what it was about, but I don't, I don't know that it has anything to do with Asheville at all. It's about a guy that liked to put, throw parties. Yeah. I watched the movie when I was in elementary school. (laughs) (laughs) It must have been an original, because I only know of the one that came out a few years ago with somebody was in it. I don't see. I didn't see it, so I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Around the age of 27, Zelda set out to become a ballet dancer. It was something she had done as a child, and she found she still had a passion for it. She began to practice relentlessly, sometimes as long as eight hours a day. But in 1923, she declined an invitation to a ballet school in Italy. Hmm. So I don't know what was going on there, but I think I would have took it and left her husband. But that's just me. Um, (laughs) And of course, while outside looking in, their marriage seemed great. They were a wonderful couple. But in reality, on the inside, it was in shambles. There was constant fighting, verbal abuse towards Zelda, and Scott was a severe alcoholic. Right. Um, listening to Mountain Murders and, you know, reading some of the research I found, it seemed like he really, he just wanted to tear down. Yeah. Like she wanted to do ballet. Oh, you're too old. You're not good enough. She tried to write, write a book. Your book isn't as good as mine. He's just a dick. It's typical old rich guy. Yeah. Um, an alcoholic. An alcoholic. You know, I definitely know about that. Sometimes when you're in that sauce, you kind of turn into an asshole and you don't even realize. Yeah. You don't really know, but it doesn't excuse it. Um, Kind of do it for no reason, too. Yeah. It. Well, I think it's just because, like, your uh, inhibition's gone and, like, that filter in there that makes, that goes, this is probably not a good idea, has yeah. pickled and is now going, do it, do it, do Mm -hmm. it. Come to the dark side. Do it. (laughs) Um, Zelda's first time in a hospital was in 1930 when she was admitted into a hospital in France where she was diagnosed as a schizophrenic. There is some 
debate upon whether she was actually schizophrenic or a bipolar disorder. Because mm-hmm. there are a few symptoms that overlap, but from some of the sources, she didn't have she didn't have hallucinations. She didn't have you know audio hallucinations or anything like that. She just had really bad mood swings and she'd flip her shit. Right. Maybe she just had ADHD and PMDD and. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait that's me never mind uh, uh she was transferred from france to a hospital in switzerland after that um after leaving the hospital in switzerland in 1931 the couple moved to alabama to be closer to zelda's dying father she was once again committed to a hospital after scott ran off to hollywood to work for mgm around the same time her father passed away and started having an affair Hmm. Which he had for shit, like seven years. Wow. Yeah. Um, and just to like leave your wife after dad died, and then you just like run off and start. Mm, man, Zelda spent the nineteen th- thirties in and out of hospitals. She would first come to Highland Hospital in nineteen thirty six. In 1938, Scott broke off his affair and moved to Asheville and moved into the Grove Park Inn to be closer to Zelda. Hmm. Poor woman. Um, the last time that they would see each other was on a trip to Cuba where Scott ended up getting drunk and pissing off the wrong man in Cuba in the 1930s. That's not good. <laughs> he ended up in the hospital. <laughs> I bet he did. <laughs> Zelda ended up back at Highland Hospital. Right. Um, she left shortly after getting there, but then was committed again the same year after Scott died of a heart attack. Hmm. I don't know why him dying would make her go back to a hospital. I think she'd be relieved at that point, but. Hmm. Right. Uh, and I know that's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, abusers can suck a left nut. Um. On March 10th, 1948, a fire broke out in the kitchen of the hospital, or in the kitchen and spread throughout the hospital. At least one source stated that there were at least two other fires that had been set throughout the building, but it was only that one source, so I don't know how accurate that is. Right. Oh, next page. Um, during the fire, the two nurses that were working in that building... And this was a fire that broke out in, like, Highland Hospital was a whole campus, but this was Highland Hall, Mm -hmm. where the women stayed. Um, During the two fire, during the fire, two nurses worked to get as many patients out of the hospital as possible. Unfortunately, by the time they reached the fifth floor, the smoke had overwhelmed them, and they were forced to be, forced to leave. And the fifth floor was where the worst of the patients were kept. Those who were harmed to themselves or their others. Um, they were locked in their rooms at night and they had chains on the windows to keep them from jumping. And this is where Zelda and eight other women died that night. Wow. So they couldn't get out at all. They couldn't get out at all. And when the fire department showed up, they couldn't get in through the windows with their ladder trucks because of the chains that were barring the windows. Hmm. And there was like some kind of like screened in porch or something that was like in the way and couldn't let them get in like. It was a whole damn mess. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, what started the fire has not been known, although one woman did come forward claiming that she may have started the fire. She was not sure. Well. Um, she was a former patient turned employee of the hospital who was a pyromaniac. Dang. Yeah. Um, but for whatever reason, she was cleared of any wrongdoing in the fire. Right. Um, Dr. Carroll gifted the hospital to Duke University in 1939, and in 1945, he became Duke's medical director. Duke owned the property until 1980. Um, it is now a recovery center for teens and youth, young adults. Nice. So, you cannot go tour the building. Like, it burnt down, but they built another one on top of it. Yeah. Um, you can't tour it. You can't do investigations. But... If you feel so inclined, you can take a little stroll through the Montford area, and you just might see Zelda also taking a stroll through the Montford area. 
spooky yeah she used to do that every day she used to like to take a walk and sometimes you can still find her walking one go look yeah <laughs> maybe one former employee claims to have ran into her on the property um it is said that she stared at him like she was trying to remember what his name was like, hmm. then she disappeared i guess i don't know right um and I'm not sure if this is the same, if this is supposed to be Zelda or a different um, apparition on the property. Mm-hmm. There is. I think it's Zelda, though, because she liked to paint and she always wore red shoes. Yeah. She had like a particular pair of red slippers. But there you can see a woman sometimes with a doll-like face, a paintbrush and red shoes. She will disappear from the head down. And the last thing that disappears is her red shoes. That makes sense. Like the fire, you know, like the smoke coming down and then making you disappear. Yeah. I think it more has to do with like the shoes were kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word, but it like it was something that she was known to wear. Right. Like, oh, Zelda and her red shoes. Mm-hmm. I think it was maybe more like that, but maybe with the fire. I mean, they were asleep, though. It's true. So I don't know. Um, interesting though. Yeah. Now, I, Dylan and Heather were talking about this on Mount Murders. If you could disappear, mm-hmm. how would you like? Would you disappear from the head down, the feet up, the arms in? Would you like disappear from the inside out? Like, how would you want to fade away if you were a spirit? Probably just like fading. Like, it's like a turn a computer when you turn the brightness down. You know. Oh, that's good. I like that. Like it just wisps away. I like that. I wonder if there's like a ghost version of like a smoke bomb. <laughs> just like, poof. Doo-doo-doo. Smoke bomb. And then just like run away. <laughs> um, if y'all have kids, go watch uh, Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja on Disney+. Plus. It's a great show. It is. Uh, it's a good show. Fun fact. It would seem that the song Witchy Woman by the Eagles was inspired by Zelda. Hmm. Which is interesting. I think whoever wrote Was it, it the ghost or the, you know, the, the actual person? I'm guessing it was probably... I don't I don't know. I mean, it was after she died, but... So the ghost. I would guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right on. Um, I have one little quote here for you. I found this on a- avltoday.com, which is Asheville Today. But um, if you want to go look it up, it's A-V-L-T-O-D-A-Y.com. You can find them on Instagram. Not an ad. Could be. Um, This is from Erica D. And this is her experience on the property. Nice. She says, and I quote, I was working in an old building in Montfort one day. While on the second floor, I was about halfway up a flight of stairs with my back turned to the bottom. There's a door that splits the stairs in half so you can't see all the way up. I don't like that. I don't know why they got to do that, but don't put a damn door <laughs> on the stairs. What the hell is wrong with y'all? Um, that was me, not her. Whatever. Mind you, I am the only person on this floor right now. Alone. Nice. Next thing I know, the hairs on my neck are standing up and I hear someone run up the steps behind me fast. So I turn quickly around and no one is there. Hmm. Just me. Footsteps. And not just footsteps, but like footsteps that are running towards you. That yeah. would have my heart in my throat. Yeah. It would scare the crap out of me. Oh my God. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Like because of my um, quote unquote medicine that I like to smoke, my paranoia is so high. Right. <laughs> Either that or I'd be like, fuck it, Patty, go back to bed. <laughs> and now I don't cuss at my kid. Y'all hush. Um, I found out later that Miss Zelda Fitzgerald had died on the second floor of Highland Hospital. Not second, but that's okay. Due to a fire, and this building was built on top of that same land. Not only that, but the elevator lights weren't working. Hmm. And then, when I went to the basement, I was compelled to utter the phrase, Wow, a lot of people are down here. It just came out of my mouth. I was by myself. No one else was down there. Hmm. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that is the haunting of Highland Hospital and the history behind it. Um, 
What do you think, Bill? It's pretty cool. I like it. It's pretty it's a cool. good story. And it's really cool that it kind of ties in the Grove Park because, like, the Grove Park will be one that we'll have to do as well. They have a lady sure. in pink. Grove Park's a spooky place. It's stunning, though. It's I used to beautiful, go there. but it's spooky. See, I never got that feeling. I used to go up there, which, like, I never got out and went in it, but I used to go up there all the time when I did Uber and Lyft in Asheville. We had our, um, we had your one prom. of our prom, our junior prom there, and uh, it was spooky. Yeah. Or I thought it was spooky. You were also a very tiny man, so <laughs> I'm sure everything was a little spooky uh, at that well, age. I wasn't worried about it that night. <laughs> you would have been, what, like 16? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We all know what 16-year-old boys are worried about yep. on prom night, <laughs> and it ain't the ghost. <laughs> It ain't the ghost. We all, all, we had four of us that went together and like, we took the girls that we worked with at Pizza Hut. So we all had older women with us. So. <laughs> what? See, this is the shit that you can, you could get away with in the nineties. Yep. <laughs> but you could not fucking get away with today. <laughs> I know how, how they even let us bring in girls that were like 21. I don't, I don't know. I don't, maybe they thought they were like your sister or something. <laughs> like... <laughs> All four of us guys got away with it, though. Oh, Lord, you children. It was great. It was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Proms are always fun. I wish we could still have proms as an adult. I'm going to do that one day. I think maybe for my 40th birthday, we'll have like a big prom and everybody can dress up all fancy. I want to do it. Damn it. It'd be fun. It would be fun. All right, you guys. Um, Head on over and follow us on Instagram at the Paranormal Lovers. You can find our videos on YouTube, although admittedly you may have to search for them for a second because it's not just popping up because we just put them on there. Yeah, I'll try to get my friend Jonathan to search and it wouldn't wouldn't pop up. I'm That's, like, yeah, you have to scroll down like quite a, quite a ways, and then finally one of our videos popped up of them there, and I was like, what the hell? All right, um, we are on Patreon. We have a three dollar tier. Um, trying to think, I don't think we have Whoops, anything else. Oh. Oh, yeah, we have a website now. Blur. Yeah. Um, not a ton on there, but it's uh, theparanormallovers.com. Come check it out. It's snazzy. Eh, it'll get better. Like I said, we're going to go get some pretty pictures taken today. So Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> we'll we'll update that website in a week or two and get all those on there. Um, there was something else. And I forgot. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, all that good stuff. Um, you can find us on, like I said, Instagram. Just about all the podcast uh, sites. Yeah, most no. of the podcast subscribing services. There's a couple like Deezer and stuff that we're not on, but we're on Spotify, iHeart, Google, Apple, and all of Apple's little podcast things, too. Um, anything else? Nope, I think that's it. No, well, all right. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Y'all Paranormal Lovers, and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.